call to order City Council Special Meeting Thursday, April 30th. Uh, I'll need an approval agenda and a roll call for the uh, council. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, a uh, roll call vote for the record. Okay, Council President Benefield. Here. Councillor Risley. Yeah. Councillor Ogilvy. Present. Councillor McCarthy. Here. And Mayor Steidel. Yes. Okay, our first item. Actually, this is, oh, I need to uh, just let everybody remember that this is a special meeting, but our public comment aspect is if you wish to provide public comment for these virtual meetings, uh, you must submit it by noon today or have submitted it. Uh, any comments you wish to make about this meeting, you can submit uh, virtually to the city hall. Um, website or let <coughs> by post and we will discuss any comments in the next meeting okay there I said that Hang on. Um, first item is consideration of ordinance 20-12 for the purpose of creating COVID-19 assistance program Bruce okay um, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm trying to help Ashley get logged on. What was your question? Oh, not a question. I was just introducing the first item. Do you want to wait for Ashley? Yeah, let me see if we can get her on because your questions are probably more likely to be directed to her. Hold on. Okay. Uh, just asking the council, did you guys get the cheat sheets that Colleen sent out? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Seems like the first time we did this was the easiest one. <laughs> it's trickier and trickier. Sorry, everybody. Ashley was having some trouble getting through. I can uh, talk some about the ordinance until she comes on. Okay. Um, essentially, the uh, ordinance 20 12 um, enacts the COVID Beach COVID 19 Business Assistant Grant Program. And they are for, it's a for a grant program for businesses that meet the statutory definition of tourist related facilities and that have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the council will adopt the criteria and guidelines for the business assistant program via resolution. 
and the business assistance program to be funded from funds in the tourist and arts fund at this time. Uh, for limited purpose, the Tourism and Arts Commission will not have powers delegated to the commission under the Cannon Beach Municipal Code, Section 232, and the funds used for the business assistance program shall not be subject to the rules and procedures of the commission. And the ordinance is an emergency as the Cannon Beach businesses are in immediate need of these grants to, to continue their operations. Ashley, are you on? I am on. Excellent. Okay. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Okay, uh, Council, do you have any questions or uh, do you want to jump right into it? Up to you. I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. I don't either. Me neither. <laughs> okay, then we need a motion for the ordinance. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> first reading kind of process. So please refer to your cheat sheet. <laughs> I move to approve the first reading of ordinance number 20-13, which would be effective immediately as an emergency ordinance. I, I believe that's 20-12. I'm sorry, I'm one ahead. Yep. 20-12, my mistake. Okay. Second. Seconded. Ordinance dash number 20-12 for the purpose of creating a COVID-19 business assistance program. Any discussion? Okay. Colleen, would you call the vote? Councilor Risley. Yes. Councilor Ogilvie. Yes. <coughs> Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Council President Benefield? Yes. And Mayor Steidel? Yes. Uh, vote was unanimous, so I can approve a second reading by Steidel. I move to approve the second reading and adopt Ordinance 20 12, effective immediately. Second. Ordinance number 20 12 for the purpose of creating a COVID 19 business assistance program. Any discussion? Colleen, would you call uh, the rule? One, I'm sorry, oh. uh, one quick question, Sam. Sure. Um, since you're recusing yourself, are, are, you, are you still going to be voting on these? Oh, thank you. I actually forgot about that. <laughs> I got up on the, uh, on the cheat sheet here and it got kind of fun. And so I will not vote on this next one because that's the actual adoption. Okay. Is that of effect when this goes into a effect then? Immediately. Immediately. Even if it's not a unanimous vote? If he's recusing himself, it would not count against the unanimous vote. Okay. Good. Okay. Colleen, please. Okay. Councillor Ogilvy. Yes. Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Council President Benefield. Yes. Councilor Risley. Yes. Mayor Stockholm. Oh. I'm recusing, so it passes with four. Um, ordinance 20, number 20-12 has been adopted and is effective immediately. Okay, that was that one. Any introduction on the second one? Bruce, do you want me to do that? Uh, yeah, if you would, Ashley, thank you. Okay. So this is the program that we had discussed last time. Um, I'd like to thank Lori and Nisa for their assistance in drafting, um, drafting the ordinance that you have in front of you. So similar to the last one, um, this is a relief, COVID-19 relief measure. So the hotels and short-term rentals in Cannon Beach have been extraordinarily impacted by the pandemic and the Cannon Beach Emergency Ordinance um, prohibiting hotels and short-term rentals from providing services to many of their patrons. So as um, the council's aware, taxes for what I'm calling quarter one, because that's how it's referred to in the code, but I think Cannon Beach refers to it as code uh, quarter three in the fiscal year. 
So taxes for quarter one were due on April 15th. And Cannon Beach experienced that some transient lodging providers either did not file a tax return by April 15th or did not remit the tax dollars it collected on behalf of the city or asked for an extension either to file or remit. So we discussed last time if there's a way um, to provide them some relief. So in the ordinance, I put down what the code currently provides. So what the code currently provides is that four times a year on the quarter, each transient lodging provider or what I call local tax trustee, because that's how it's referred to in the code. So a local tax trustee remits the taxes um, to the city. If they do not remit the tax um, to the city on time, the city administrator can give them a month long extension. However, any extensions over and above a month are referred to the city council for decisions. So the code also provides that interest and penalties apply to late filed transient lodging tax taxes. And so what we discussed last time was a one-time relief from strict adherence to the code. So what I have in front of you is an ordinance that does a couple things. So first, um, local tax trustees can go ahead and follow the code as it's written. My understanding is that a lot, or I guess most of the local tax trustees in Cannon Beach did file their taxes and paid their taxes on time this quarter. So that's great. However, for those that did not, there is um, the opportunity for them to take advantage of the transient tax remittance deferral program. And under this program, within seven days of the effective date of this ordinance, which would be um, a week from today, local tax trustees can submit a signed deferment agreement, their quarter one tax return, so letting us know, you know what they would owe the city, and then they can remit 50% of the tax that would have been due. If they abide by these code provisions or these provisions of this ordinance, they would not be subject to the interest and penalties that are currently in the code. If they do not, then they would be subject to the interest and penalties in the code um, accruing, beginning to accrue tomorrow. The remaining 50% of the tax would become due on July 15th, uh, which we're calling the second payment date. If the local tax trustee enters into one of these deferment agreements and then fails to make the second payment, the second percent on July 15th, they would be subject to the interest and delinquency pay penalties that are in the code. However, if they, do not, I'm sorry, if they do abide by the agreement and make the second payment, they'll have no, um, no detriment for deferring that 50%. We also discussed making it an option. So as we talked about, most local, um, local tax trustees did pay their taxes this quarter. Those that didn't, again, have this opportunity. We also wanted to make it a option for what I'm calling quarter two, which is fiscal quarter four. Um, so those that did not take advantage of this program in quarter one can use that same program in quarter two. Um, and again, it's exactly the same except for the dates. So these would be taxes that are going to be due July 15th. 50% um, would be due July 15th along with, along with the deferment agreement and their tax returns. And then the second 50% would be due October 15th, 2020. Um, this is also drafted as an emergency ordinance because the, obviously the timetable goes into effect um, immediately. So I'm available for questions. I don't know if Lori is there too, but she was a great help on this and, um, and Bruce as well. Okay, thanks Ashley. Any questions? Okay, uh, somebody wanna jump into this? I move to approve the first reading of Ordinance 20-13, which would be effective immediately as an emergency ordinance. Second. Brandon made a second. Uh, okay, ordinance number 20-12 for the purpose of creating a transient lodging tax TLT deferment program. Any discussion? 
that should say 20-13. It should, thank you. Okay, uh, Colleen, you wanna call the roll? Hey, Councillor McCarthy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Council President Benefield. Yes. Councillor Risley. Yeah. Councillor Ogilvy. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Steidel. Yes. This was a unanimous vote, so I'll read this uh, second reading by title. I move to approve the second reading and adopt Ordinance 20-13, effective immediately. Seconded, ordinance dash number 20-13 for the purpose of creating a transient lodging tax TLT deferral program. Any discussion? Nope. Colleen? No. Council President Benefield? Yes. Councilor Risley? Yes. Councilor Ogilvy? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Mayor Yes. With that, ordinance number 20-13 has been adopted and is effective immediately. Okay. With that, get my little hoo-hickey up. I think that takes us straight into good of the order. And I'll start just because I was absent last night with the meeting that you guys had. Um, because I was on the phone with the other mayors of the county and the county manager joined us. Um, the discussion was lively, actually, uh, but not really productive. <laughs> it, uh, I learned some stuff, I, and mostly from Don, uh, about where the county is and what they're doing. Uh, they're presenting with the uh, guidelines from the county, they're gonna get that to me and Bruce pretty soon. Uh, by that, I mean probably middle next week. Um, they're in the process of talking to the various industries. Uh, I don't know if they've contacted Jim yet, but they're talking to folks and they're trying to get some feedback on their guidelines so that the county will set up uh, its presentation, I guess. I don't know what they're calling it, uh, that will go to the state, either the governor's office or whatever department's looking at this thing. At that point, the state will then make its determination somehow of whether the county can move forward with phase one. Um, we are, as Classic County, I think everybody is aware of this, we've checked off all the boxes except the one, uh, which is testing and pretty much what we've, uh, what we talked about as mayors was, it ain't happening. Uh, and it's not much that we can do about it, except you know try and push buttons and get people active. Um, more details from what the other cities are doing. Uh, they're pretty much convinced as a group of mayors um, that. We are going to follow the, once the travel ban is lifted, that means everything else is pretty much lifted. They are all our understanding that's the key one for us in the tourism industry. Um, they also realized that because we all have councils, uh, some of the other cities are having a little bit of a challenge with some pushback from their council members. Um, Differently interesting. We all had stories about what we're doing. I didn't have any good stories because you guys are all doing great. Um, Seaside, it sounds like we'll be voting on something on the 11th, uh, possibly to open their beach. That was the one big difference that they did that's not really under control of the county. Um, Jay is going to try and make that a soft opening of some kind with uh, signage that means, yes, the beach is open, but we don't really appreciate visitors coming. 
or something like that. They'll, they're going to work something out, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping, and this was my big concern, that as soon as Seaside says the word open, the are going to go, uh, no matter what the other rulings are. We'll see. Um, the timeline, I think, is what Rick has been telling us. Um, so I'm not worried about, we're not setting dates. Nobody's talked about dates yet. We're just waiting to see where the governor is going to go with the phase one prospect. Uh, there was a couple other interesting discussions about campgrounds, which don't really affect us that much, uh, as much as it does Henry and uh, Warrington. Astoria is interestingly far more reserved than we are. They don't really want to open up in Astoria, according to Bruce Jones. I thought that was interesting. So, other than that, um, that was my report. Sam? Yeah. Um, campgrounds would be phase three, correct? That's in the discussion. I don't know. Uh, that There's was. Hotels and motels. Yeah, I guess uh, Rick might have to confirm this, but some of the uh, state parks might be opening at different times, um, hunting and, you know, backwoods stuff might be opening much sooner. So I don't know, um, we'll have to wait. Okay. Sam, the uh, ban on campgrounds, that includes the RV park, right? It would for us, yeah. And rights for camping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have anything else for reporting? Good to the order stuff. Uh, just a quick question of you, Sam. Okay. Uh, so, in regards to testing, there you've heard nothing from any other city about whether they can get any more, or are we just all going to just have to wait until? It happens or doesn't. The only thing I've heard is what Rick's been reporting. So I would ask him to uh, chime in on that if there was anything pertinent. Uh, other than that, no, I have not heard anything. Okay. <laughs> the little yellow box keeps moving all around. Who's talking? <laughs> is Rick there? Yeah, I'm here. I, I'm online with you guys. So, Rick, do you know what the status is of testing? Uh, yes, I do, actually. Um, the challenge with is going on with the testing with the entire county is that they've only received 20 testing kits, and they requested 5,000. So the, the big challenge with testing when it comes down to any of the preliminary readings is, it can't really be used that much as a defining moment to go or no go 100% with testing. So they're evaluating other counties that have more testing because they had more ill people that were symptomatic and so they had more testing population and they're evaluating that testing population every day and that's Oregon Health Authority. But in Clatsop County, they've only received a very small amount of testing kits. So, the other counties as well have only received a fraction of the kits that they've requested. So testing will not really be a defining factor in my opinion when it comes down to what is going to make the decision for the governor. So they're going to have to look at other things and other factors in order to make that final decision. When it comes down to phase one, two, or three, we did talk about uh, some things were brought up about parks and stuff like that. And that, that's still under advisement. Uh, phase three is going to take us a little while to get to, um, but I'm not sure how much testing is going to be involved in all the future decisions when it comes down to what the governor is going to get information for, because the tests just aren't there. Rick, how successful are they with testing in the metropolitan area? Um, what they're doing in the metropolitan areas is they're still providing quite a bit of tests in those areas because more people are sick because they have a denser population. So 
just like what they had in, in Clatsop County, if you contacted your doctor and you were sick and the doctor agreed that that's something that you were, you were going to dealing with, then they would, they would essentially send you to your doctor. Your doctor would provide a test for you. You'd get tested. And then that would go into the system of the Department of Public Health. And the Department of Public Health would be able to now register you as somebody who was tested. We haven't had that many people in this county that were tested. But when it comes down to it, in the population area, they had a lot more. Uh, in Oregon, we still only have a tested population that's positive of less than 5%. But anybody who needs a test due to their doctor's recommendation are able to get them. And that's a positive. Thanks, Greg. My concern is that, you know, we, we may be great here in, in uh, Clatsop County with uh, no new cases for, you know, many weeks. But as soon as we open up the, uh, the, the people from those areas that aren't as uh, disease or virus free as we are start descending on the beaches and the towns. So I guess I'm not so concerned that we're not getting testing here because we have evidence that it's under control or we haven't seen anything, any new cases for quite a while. <clears throat> but I, my concern is uh, the st you know, things beyond our control. It, other counties, the metropolitan areas, uh, or the governor says, uh, well, it's good enough. And we basically have to open up and here they come. I, I, I guess I just concerned there's not sufficient testing in the metropolitan areas to have me feel safe from the invasion of the uh, the visitors, so I don't know how long we can keep the no visitors active. I guess we'll play it week by week, but I, I guess that's that's my concern, and I don't know how to deal with it because we don't have any control over the metropolitan areas. Uh, only here. The one thing I'd like to add to that is anybody who has shown symptoms has had an opportunity to go get a test and they've been able to get the testing done. Uh, with that being said, when it, when it really comes down to it is some of the guidelines of people who are, you know, they want people to basically stay home if they're sick and then wear masks in public if they have to go outside in public. And, um, if you look at the onslaught of people that might come to the coast, like let's say it's a July 2nd date uh, of last year, the town was packed with people and only the parking lots and all the parking spaces were the limit of the town's capacity. Nobody else could come in if you couldn't park and, and get out of your vehicle. And that's about what it would be, you know, tomorrow if they listed the ban. And, and hopefully we get a handle in the next couple of weeks of how to handle all the restaurants and the retailers and we are able to maintain some type of social distancing, but realize that those other, those other places are also coming from environments that people who were sick were able to get tested. And they're not showing a huge amount of people that are sick and not either sequestered or being tested. That's not happening. There's plenty of kits around in metropolitan areas and even Clatsop County that are not being used right now. Okay, thanks. Well, and this is Robin. It, I just was um, noticing that California is closing their beaches because they did have their rules relaxed and now they're pulling back because of how populated things were. So I sure hope we can just do it once and do it correctly. And if I was to give feedback to that, it would be we were able to shut our city down in a very short manner of time and the state. And as long as the hospitals are being evaluated and there's enough of not testing of individuals, but enough reflex of information coming in from the hospitals, then we should be able to pause of what we're doing. And that's the whole purpose of the two weeks. Whenever they open up something and they say, this will be like this for two weeks or that will be like that for two weeks, that whole purpose is to evaluate what's going on in those two weeks. So you don't have mm -hmm. to go all the way 
back down to a complete shutdown, but you can at least stop what you're doing and, and step back one step. And um, we're at a point right now where the whole city is basically shut down. And I think we know how to do that. And we have confidence in doing that. And the county does as well. So that's, that's, that's a good thing. So what I think California is doing, and this is just my opinion, is they never put those orders in effect. And people are starting to get a little stir crazy down there. And they're, they're branching out. And they're putting in some controls in effect to try to limit that. But we've already done that here on this, on this coast. So um, for us, it's not that foreign. Thank you. I guess the thing that I'm worried about is, yes, people who've had symptoms have been tested and that's all well and fine, but we still have people who are asymptomatic who may or may not have it and they haven't been tested because they haven't had any symptoms. So they come down to the beach and suddenly there might be a breakout. So I'm just a little, I'm concerned about that. One, one thing that the county and myself are, are monitoring every day is basically what the state's doing. We're able to, Oregon Health Authority monitors the hospitals every single day. And that's one thing that the random test kits that are brought to the county, which haven't happened, those, those, those are unrealized. But every day, the Oregon Health Authority reviews the hospitals. So if they do find a breakout anywhere in the state, they're able to react very quickly. They haven't found that anywhere recently at all. But if they did, they, they are now beefed up in their responses and PPE and the amount of people that are mobilized throughout the state to react to it quickly. And they're, they're, they're evaluating those hospitals every 24 hours. So if anything, when there is a breakdown out in the state, if it does happen, it will be identified fast. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, last chance for anything else, any other topic? Okay then, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi Jen. <laughs> thanks Rusty. Yep, thanks, Sam.